Hi everybody, thanks for joining Create with D. Today I'll share with you how you can make this adorable button bracelet. I've been wanting to give, um, give this a try for a long time. And a special thank you to fellow demonstrator Jill Olson, who had a great tutorial on how to make this. So not only will, we, will I show you how to make this button bracelet, but also how you can use the Stampin' Up! button containers to make a cute little adorable gift box that you can um, house your gift in. So let's get started making the button bracelet. So to get started on making our buttons, our button bracelet, what we're going to need is some Stretch Magic. And you do want to use Stretch Magic. I went to the um, my local big chain department store and they didn't have Stretch Magic. They had this other clear stretch cord and it doesn't have memory to it. So I'm sure for its purpose that it was meant for, it's fine. Only once this gets stretched out, it doesn't um, have any memory to it. So Stretch Magic is definitely what you want to use. And um, I use the five millimeter length. So I've got a piece of that already cut about 14 inches and I've got it threaded on a needle. And I'm going to take some tape and I'm just going to anchor down one of the sides. Okay. So for me, how I like to arrange my buttons, and I want to give a special um, call out for here first, I guess, to Jill Olson, a fellow demonstrator. She um, has a great tutorial on how to make this bracelet. So thanks, Jill, for sharing. Okay, the first thing that you want to do is set up your button arrangement. Um, for me, what I found that I like best is to have um, basically a row of 10 buttons. And so you're going to need a total of 30 buttons, um, 10 of each of the three different sizes. Again, the um, Stampin' Up! Designer Series buttons, you would have enough buttons in one container to make two bracelets and then a couple of little extra pieces. So again, your colors can match perfectly in the color tones and you don't have to go out searching for um, through the rows and rows of different buttons. Stampin' Up! makes it easy for us. Everything coordinates. Okay, so for me, I put my pattern down that I wanted to have and what I like to do is I set down or I I put down my pattern for the first row. And then on the second row, um, what I did is I, I offset the color by one. So the gray, you know, so it, it goes gray here, um, very vanilla here, black, the um, crumb cake. So again, kind of, I offset each color by one and then do the same thing for the little flower buttons on the top. So if you kind of notice my colors are on a diagonal and that's how I've got my pattern set up. So I hope that makes sense. But that's how I found that I, you know, it takes the guesswork of what um, what order to put it in. And for me, that's a real pleasing, a pleasing pattern. Okay, so I've got a needle thrown um, ran through on the stretch magic cord. You wouldn't have to use the needle. I just found for me it works a little better. Take my first layer or my first um, button, and it does go medium, large, and small. So I take my um, bottom layer, which is the medium button, and I'm going to go over the top. So I'm coming over the top of it first and back up through. Okay, and I want to leave myself a little um, area here at the edge where I have it taped because I want to use that to tie it together at the end. Okay, so I put that down and then I take my next layer, this is the large button, and I'm going to come up through the button this time and go ahead and put the smaller button layer on it as well. Bring the cord up through and down through the other button hole. And I'm going to stack it over top of my bottom layer of that medium one. Pick up my next layer over the top of the, of course, the, the medium one, which is going to be the bottom layer. Slide that down, get it lined up, pick up my next layer coming up through the top as well as stacking that little flower. Love that little flower button that comes in the set, so darn cute. I think the flower just makes the, the project. Okay, so when you do this, I found that you want to keep scooting it down your stretchable cord 
and you want to keep these two, the top layer, close together. Um, when I first started, I thought, oh, I want to see that button. That's not what you want to do. What you want to do is make sure that you get those kind of stacked up close on tippy top of each other. So let's do one more together over the top of the bottom layer with the medium size back up through. Go ahead and scooch that down in there. Pick up my top layer, come up through the button, and back down through. My stretchy cord's got a long tail right at the moment. There we go. And again, keep pushing that through. Okay, I'll be back once I have the rest of those put on. Okay, so we get all of our buttons, all ten, all ten of them on. And now is your time to do any adjusting that you want, meaning adjusting to kind of keep these scooched down a little bit. You can move them down your cord, your elastic cord. And again, I just keep um, scooching it down so that it's nice and tight, meaning that there's no gaps to it. Um, I'm going to you know, just make sure that those buttons are right on top of each other on the layers and go from there. Because once it's tied, you know, it, it's a done deal at that point. Okay, so that looks really, really good. Okay, I'm going to take my needle off. I've got my tape on this side here. Whoops, get that off. Come on, you rascal. Oh, I did have it taped down nice and good. Well, good land. <laughs> okay, so I've got my bracelet ends. Can I see a little bit more that I want to scooch down? There we go. Nice and tight. I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to make a knot. So just an everyday knot and actually I'm going to do about four of them. So I'm just going to keep tying it just to make sure that I've got that nice and tight and that that bracelet is not going anywhere. So one of these projects that are so fun to do while you're, um, you know, killing some time watching TV or something like that. Just make sure that's nice and tight. If you wanted to, you could even come down with maybe just a little bit of hot glue just to anchor that. I haven't done that yet though. And there's our bracelet. How cute. Cute, cute, cute. I love it. Love it, love it, love it. Okay, so those are, that's how easy it is to make our little button bracelets. And I wanted to share with you how I made this little container out of the um, an empty con out of an empty button container, so that you could go ahead and use it as a little gift and just kind of um, you know incorporate all of the elements of the buttons that we use. So now we'll finish off the project by making this cute little box. So in order to decorate the little button container that um, of course the buttons came with. I used some designer series paper. These are in the um, assorted packs, just like you get an assorted collection of the of the of the color collections and the buttons. You can get designer paper in a designer paper pack the same way. So with the Settles collection, I've got a strip of that um, designer paper in um, certainly celery, and this is cut at one half inch by eight and a half. And I just took my Tombow. And for the sake of the video, the rest of the video, I won't actually do it. But I just put a bead of Tombow around there and attach the belly band as such. And then with the pretty in pink that comes in that paper pack, I punched out a one and a half inch circle. It fits the top of the lid just perfectly, perfectly, perfectly. And the stamp sets that I used on that is button buttons. You get stamps um, that are all of these buttons, which are so fun. And so I'm picking up all of the colors that are in this um, button pack here. And so I stamped this button image on um, my Whisper White, taking a 3 quarters inch circle punch. All of those buttons in that set, um, in that stamp set, um, you can use a punch with. 
Well, I think for the most part, I think there's some square ones in there. So I punched out the little button and with my um, paper piercer pack and my paper piercer, I went ahead and poked out the four holes on the stamp as sh you know, shown there. And then I took some of the white baker's twine through the, um, through the holes that I just pierced and made this cute little um, embellishment up there since we are giving buttons and, you know, of course. And then this is maybe one of those stamp sets that are easily overlooked. It's called Creatively Year Yours, but it's got all sorts of little handmade um, and created by stamps. So this is created by hand stamp, deliciously made for you, you know, perfect for a baker or baking person. And this one says just for you, which I thought was pretty good for a bracelet. And then I took the decorative label punch, which it's out of camera shot right at the moment. Got it. <laughs> Goodness. And lined that up with the made for you, just made for you. What a cute sentiment. And especially telling somebody that it was just made for you as you're sitting there making your your button gifts, your button bracelet gifts, you know you probably have certain people in mind that you're ready to go, that you want to give it. And I just put a little so saffron color um, swirl there and edged um, around with some, um, again, coordinating certainly celery, and off you go. So that's how you can use your empty button containers to make a cute little gift receptacle and box to give somebody. I would have loved to have gotten that. Look how cute that is. Enjoy making your button bracelets, everybody. Happy crafting. Bye-bye.